Hi, and welcome to the 10 square meter workshop. I know I said I wasn't going to do any more modifications to my drill mill system, but there's always room for one more. Coming up after this. I've considered for some time adding power feed to, to my milling machine table. I've been putting it off because, well, surely I should go straight to CNC. But there's a few reasons why not. The mill I have is very unsuitable for conversion. It'll be a lot easier to start from scratch. And the things I do, would I go to all the trouble of doing a full design? I think not. I tend to design as I go along. And besides, my lathe has power feed without being CNC, so why shouldn't my mill? If I'm going to do this, I want a system that's both simple and easy to disengage, so I can still use the mill manually. This then is the shaft I will have to drive, coupling a motor to this hand wheel and arranging it so they can be disconnected, because as I say, I want to be able to use it manually as well. Because the silver part you can see also contains the thrust bearing, I don't really want to try machining this. My starting point was a number of gears I would rescued from an old line printer I dismantled. I clamped a disc of alloy to one of the larger ones, and then machined out the centre, just over 44mm. This was drilled and tapped to take a 4mm grub screw. This mounted as a snug fit onto the spindle and does not interfere with normal operation. As I wanted this to be a simple installation, my next step was to buy this motor gearbox from Amazon. Because of the size of the pinion seam fitted, I chose a 200 rpm output. This will give me around 60 rpm on the spindle, which is one turn per second. One of the reasons for choosing this was the mounting holes on the back of the gearbox. This allowed me to mount it on a piece of 3 16 aluminium angle, just over 4 millimetres. Next step was to drill and tap the carriage and fit a 6 millimetre stud. I found a very small three-way toggle switch, which is going to be my direction control. I then wired up the motor to the switch and then to a flexible cable. Time to test it and see if it works. Yep, that's fine. The bracket fits over the stud and then a locking lever is fitted. The gears were then aligned and the grub screw tightened. To engage the gears, the clamp was loosened, the gears meshed, and the clamp retightened. Moment of truth, will it run? Yep, but is of course going the wrong way. Need to swap polarity. Polarity reversed, so it will go in the direction the switch is done. That looks just about the right rate to me. I wanted a simple system, and I'm not sure how I could make it any simpler. Next I needed a socket to plug the cable into, here mounted on a small bracket. This bolts onto the plate that holds my lift motor. The spiral cable runs from the motor at the bottom, up to the plug and socket as you can see, and means that it doesn't obstruct motion of either the table or the head. Regular viewers will know that under the belt cover on the top of the mill is where I took my power supply for the mill hoist. 
So now I need to add a 12 volt output to this. I found a tapping on the transformer that gave me the right voltage, so here we go. And back again. So pleased am I with it that I've treated myself to a new vice from those good guys over at Kronos. So there we have it. The last modification to my drill mill machine. Or is it? Yeah, surely. Bye for now.